thank you. And now uh, we have from Kungel, actually, where I live. A uh, very important place in Sweden. Yay! <laughs> uh, Unifier, uh, you're going to talk about technical solutions for automatic uh, fire systems. Yes. So thank you, thank you, uh, organizer, for inviting us to 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 this event since 2002. We're we're based in Kungel. Kungel. So uh, we're home. I'm home. It's nice to be here. Um, the product or solution we want to talk about is, is this system that we call Flame Ranger. It's a fully automatic fire detection and extinguishing system. Uh, very interesting in this context because normally you would have fire detection and um, uh, suppression systems, which means you basically keep the fire under control until you can call the fire brigade or someone can come and do the job and finish the fire off. Um, what is the problem? What is the problem we're trying to solve with this? This is the problem, really, that fire develops exponentially, just like this. So uh, people have a tendency to think that it, it looks pretty good in the beginning and we have time, so uh, the panic doesn't really come until it's too late. Uh, as long as there's fuel and oxygen, the fire will go grow very rapidly. So these fairly not a ship, but trust me, it, it does develop this way. And here you can see what exponential growth looks like. And uh, lots of people died in this fire here. Here's another event a year ago in Dubai. Uh, also starts as a very, very small fire within a minute. It's for four floors and within 80 seconds, it's 20 floors. So it's all about this. We need very fast detection and we need very fast extinguishing. The faster we can detect, the better our chance is to keep something that starts as an in incident, actually stay an incident, not grow, grow totally out of control. Um, we started developing this in 2009, 2010 already. And uh, we dropped a video on YouTube in 2010. Uh, then three years ago, we got an email from, from the US Navy who had a problem. And their problem looked like this. I'll show you a very, very short video. Just So that's that's the scenario. They were looking for a fire detection extinguishing system for their aircraft carriers. And that's that's why they came to us, the little company in Kungel, which is spectacular actually. So this is what it is, uh, early fire detection, very early extinguishing, accurate response within seconds, uh, using a high flow and uh, thereby because we're using a high flow, we can actually put it out very, very quickly. So we're using a very, very small amount of water. Uh, essentially, it's a very, very simple idea because what it is, is a fire extinguishing system that actually like a firefighter would. You aim the water onto the flames rather than spraying the whole neighborhood as uh, these systems would, would do. So this is uh, also that the uh, animation of the system does. There's two detectors. There's a fire. Uh, the first it takes picks this up and puts a uh, system in a, in a tree alarm mode so that now it's in, 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 a, in a red. The second detectors tell the system well, now we have to do the fire. So now it aims, it opens the valves, and it's it's a dynamic system that actually follows uh, the flame around. So if the flame moves, the system moves with the flame. And Equally important then is when the fire is out, the system also it closes, it closes it out. And that's a very important part of this. So, 
so uh, these couple of images shows literally how, how the system can be installed. There's a, a robotic nozzle sitting on the wall. There's detectors in the corners. Uh, this again is the environment, the scenario that the US Navy came to us with. And there's all kinds of things standing around. Uh, and their, their response today is literally uh, manual firefighting to this. Uh, so what we'd like to do is when this flame incident, then the system will pick that up immediately, aims, dumps a lot of water on it, puts it out, and this, that starts as an incident, then stays an incident. Uh, what, what they want to get away from, and, and which is really a problem in the world right now, is that the uh, fire, fire suppression systems, they don't turn themselves off. So uh, then you have situations like this, or, or like this. And this is happening all the time, because their response to a fire this size, which is basically, imagine a waste bin on fire. The only response they have to that is dumping thousands and thousands of gallons of, on the floor. Uh, something much closer to home, is this one, which happened here next door. This is the Swedish television house. They had a fire in their pantry, and this is what's on the news t the day after. We, we could control the fire, but we couldn't turn off the sprinkler system. And that's, that's what's happening. So then the, uh, the cure is much worse than the disease, really. Their solution is becoming a much, much, much bigger problem than the initial fire. So again, this is the idea of the system. Very quick detection. And therefore, we're using very little water because we're putting out early. So there's no re re real use for these massive amounts of water that uh, that usually sprinkler systems are using. Uh, 2015, we went three times to uh, to Mobile, Alabama, and did tests on this to U.S. Navy's uh, test vessel. Um, scenario looked like this. This apparently is very similar to their cargo base, and this is supposed to be very similar to the, the actual uh, scenario that the U.S. Navy are trying to, to uh, address. So two detectors, one robotic nozzles. Uh, Ten seconds. And 20 seconds, it's under control, and after after this burns out, actually, there's not even scorching. There's not a mark on these pallets. And that's what we want. We want this. We want very early detection. We want very efficient uh, extinguishing. We don't, we don't want this incident to go beyond being an incident. We want it to be not exciting, not dramatic. This wouldn't make the news. This could happen, and no one will ever know about it. And that's what we want. Second test, pre-burn time, uh, with because of course they wanted to know what, what the system worked with the bigger bigger fire. Uh, in this test, uh, the system actually detected within three seconds. So that means we have two detectors picking up, and it's confirmed to be the same flame, and the system is activated within three seconds, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, so as this was a pre-burn test, they turn off the water for us, and now this is only aiming towards these flames there, as you'll see. Uh, and then they let this burn for three minutes until... until the water is released. And what you see here clearly is that it actually, from having aim on the lower flames, it actually is now aiming up on the higher flames. And then you'll see literally how it's chasing the flames around. The minute the water cloud actually hits, hits the flames, then that target disappears. And 10 times a second it recalculates and it will find, find a new target. So uh, the second it actually hits the flame, then that target disappears essentially. So that's that's what you see happening right here now. So 
So very successful couple of days. This whole report is on our website, automaticfirefighting.com. If you want to read all about it, what's really interesting is this one here, uh, fully automatic, less than 25 gallons, so less than 100 liters. Uh, I think I can cut it there, actually. Yes. Perfect. So there's more to talk about, but if you want to know more, please come and talk to me. Thank you. And this is fully autonomous? It's fully auto auto autonomous. There's a web server in the system, so there is the ability to network the system and the system will communicate with you or your system, but you don't actually need the network for the system to operate. So each cell is a standalone system that works on its own completely, co completely autonomous in the true sense of the word, really. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.